Welcome to my first Blender Burger tutorial. This is for absolute beginners who want to try Blender for the first time. So let's start right now. In this series I will show you how to make this dinner scene in the most beginner friendly way I can do it. I'm really excited for this tutorial as I have always wanted to make a candle but I've never made one before. We won't start making this scene in this tutorial yet, we'll only do it in the next episode. First we have to talk about the basic navigation in Blender, some shortcuts and the user interface. This is Blender 2.8. You are looking at Blender 2.8 and thinking what the heck is this? And you're absolutely right, what the heck am I looking at? Actually. Blender 2.8 is a lot better user interface now than any previous Blender uh, versions before, so maybe it's not the most appropriate thing to say. Also, keep in mind that you can choose in the beginning of your first install what keyboard shortcuts you want to use. You can use the legacy ones, the new ones or Maya 3ds Max shortcuts. I'm using the default shortcuts and you should too, otherwise this tutorial won't make any sense. Anyway, what you are seeing in the middle is the 3D viewport you will be working in 99% of the time. Holding the middle mouse button makes it possible to rotate the 3D view. Scrolling zooms in or out and holding shift and the middle mouse button pans the view. The 3D viewport comes with the default cube and some other things which we will usually just delete. Uh, so this is your first lesson, how to delete objects in Blender. Use delete or X key to delete objects. We usually use X in Blender. If you press it, a little menu will pop up helping you decide what and how to delete. And doing other stuff, more options will be here, so it's recommended to use X for deleting. Ok, but now that we got rid of everything, what's next? Good question, my friends. If you come over here, you can add new objects to your scene. Mesh objects are basically the normal 3D objects you will see in most of the times and they are based on polygons. Polygons are lines with some points to connect them. In the 3D world that's usually 4 or 3 points which will end up making up quads and triangles. We will ignore the other objects in this episode because they are more of the stuff. Let's add back our cube. Also you can bring up the same menu with shift A. To move objects, press G and wave your cursor around like you have seizure. Good. No, you can move objects. G is for grab, by the way, so it makes a lot of sense. With S, you can change the size of the objects. And with R, you can rotate them. You can also rotate them around an axis or change the size around an axis. This gizmo shows you the three axes while the X is red and the Y is green and the Z one is blue. It's very simple, just press for example S, then X or Y or Z for your preferred axis, then Blender will snap the size, movement for rotation to that axis. If you hold shift by doing this, Blender will move the object in every direction except the axis that you defined. Here comes my favorite part, as you can see we are in object mode, which means we can select and move multiple objects at the same time. But if we want to edit them directly, we need to use edit mode. We can change it up here, but I'm too lazy for that. Let's press tab, which will put us in edit mode. With the same keys we used, G for grab, R for rotate and S for size, we can edit the mesh directly. For that we need to select the vertices or faces first that we want to edit. Click somewhere uh, to deselect the mesh. Press 1 on your keyboard for vertex select mode, 2 for edge select mode and 3 for face select mode. Now that you selected some parts of the mesh, try to drag it around. To select multiple vertices or edges or anything, hold shift by clicking on the vertices you want to select. This is what you will do in almost any other programs, both 3D or 2D. To deselect some parts of the object, click on some vertices again while still holding shift. If you don't hold it, the wall selection will reset. Enough modeling for today. We will look at the basic modeling tools in the next video. You can find them in the left toolbar, you can experiment with them if you want, but I will teach you really nice and easy shortcuts for them too. Although this version of Blender doesn't focus that much on shortcut keys, there are still basic ones that simply make your life easier while using Blender. Press tab to get out of edit mode. If you press ctrl tab you can change between other modes, which you can do up here too. As you can see Blender has these different modes and we have tabs that have these modes pre-opened. For example, if you go to modeling, you will find yourself in edit mode without pressing tab. 
If you go into scalp mode, you will find yourself in sculpting mode. This is a very big and a good change in Blender 2.8, but these modes deserve their own episode. So now, we know that on the left we have the, this button where we can change modes, but remember we can access these modes like this or this too. And up here Blender has the basic menu that you will find in almost any other programs, and this contains a lot of cool settings and other amazing stuff. On the right side, we see the outliner which lists our objects in our scene. We have this eye icon which we can use to hide our object. Blender 2.8 works with collections which are like folders in the operating system. You can group the objects nicely with them and move them into sub-collections. Let's try this out. With Shift D we can copy our cubes. Now that we have multiple cubes inside our collection, we can rename this collection. Double click to rename. Right click on the outliner to create new collections. We can shift select here too and drag the cubes around. Let's keep them in our second collection. Under the outliner we see all different options. Up here we have the active tool settings. These are settings for the tools on the left side. Here we have the render settings. Render engine means what you render with. By default it is set to EV, which is like a game engine and we also have Cycles, which is a lot slower, but a lot more realistic. The printer icon shows your rendering settings. You can set up the resolution and if you make an animation it's length at its frame rate. For animations you have to define a folder before you start rendering. New layer settings are for compositing, but here we can use Blender's built-in Denoiser 2 for cycles. The Scene tab has your active camera. We don't have any because we deleted ours. So let's add our camera now. Shift A camera. Shift D and you can change the active camera now. If you press 0, it will fit your screen to the active camera. The world tab contains your sky settings. Here we can add an HDRI or a basic matte color sky for ambient lighting. This works best in cycles as it can get the ambient lighting from the color sky. The orange box has your object settings. With precise transform controls, we can place or rotate our objects more accurately. The modifier stack is empty now, but this will be useful for non-destructive editing of our objects. For example, one of the most used modifiers is subdivision surface. With it, we can create soft edges, which is very useful for creating sofas, chairs or other furniture which don't have straight sides or edges. When we right click on the selection, a small menu will come up with relevant object settings, for example shading. If we turn on smooth shading, it will tell Blender to well uh, shade objects smoothly instead of the blocky shading, which is only good for hard surface objects. Faking the shading this way helps to keep the object uh, polygon count very low. The other interesting tab is our object data tab. We used Shift D to duplicate our object before, but with Alt D we can link the object data between the two objects, which means they will have the same materials and if we edit one of them, the other one will be edited too. If we don't want these objects to keep track of the modifications, we can unlink them by pressing this little button. The number shows how many objects use the same data. If we unlink one object from the other two, the other two will share the same data until we unlink them too. This might be a bit weird for first, it's important to remember this as uh, you will need this in the future for bigger scenes unless you want to repeat every single step all the time after you du duplicated objects. This also works with textures, materials and editing that is inside Blender. And if we are talking about materials, here we can add a basic material. Let's change it to red color. To see your beautiful, albeit very boring, red material, I will change the viewport shading from the basic shading to the rendered shading because boring is still better than ugly as the wise men say. But it's quite dark. 
Let's head back or light. I will choose sound lab. Notice that you can change settings if you go into this light bulb tab. Different type of objects will have their own tabs, because this isn't a mesh object or options are different too. We have other viewport options like the material view, which is lighter on the GPU, it doesn't load lights, and some other effects, which helps uh, to maintain a smooth experience. We have the wireframe mode, which helps to see the structure of our object. X-ray is helping to see through the object so they can't hide anything from us. You can hide these uh, little gizmos, but it doesn't have much uh, sense unless your screen is uh, so small you need the extra space or something like that. Orthographic mode is useful for modeling, you will see I will use it a lot through the series. If you click on the axis you can snap the view into one side. This puts us into orthographic mode and it's a good way to show you why the orthographic mode is useful. Without perspective, the wall object will have straight lines so it's easier to see the real length or the shape of the object. Also, perspective view distorts our object and it's impossible to see the other side correctly if we want to use the X-ray for the object. If we press 5 on the numpad, we can swap between the two views easily. And with the other keys, we can snap the view to different axes. The gizmo has a secret weapon though. If you click on the axis you snap the view to, it will rotate the whole view and snap it from the other direction. This is helpful if you want to quickly see the top of the object, then quickly rotate it to the bottom. Now before we finish this episode, I recommend you to do the following. For some reason, at the last minute of development, they kind of messed up the UI, which I'm not a big fan of. For example, we only have these eye icons here. And we don't have anything here that I'm really missing, actually. I think they tried to make a trap and make newcomers think Blender has a very lightweight UI, but they can fool us. So come up here and enable the toolbar. This has the tool settings, which we can access from here too, but it takes up less place and I use it in more videos. It makes sculpting and other things a lot easier. And these little icons, they are very important. Click on this, I don't even know what to call it icon, and enable these. As I mentioned, with the eye, we can hide our object or collections. We can do the same by pressing H. And if you press Alt H, you can unhide them. This is the shortcut for the eye icon, which is for hiding the object in the viewport. The display icon does the same, but it doesn't react to age or Alt H. It is because it uh, permanently hides our object in the viewport. And if we click on the camera, it will hide the object when we render an image or animation. I have no idea why they got rid of this by default as these are very important when we have a bigger scenes and want to disable the parts of it in the viewport to speed uh, things up while for example we enable the visibility uh, when rendering because uh, then we don't care about time and efficiency because we can just wait for the final render. Oh, at least normally. To keep these settings, come up here and save the start of file. Oh, by the way, you have to do the same thing on all tabs, have fun with that. Of course you don't have to, but then remember that I set my UI up like that, so in future you have to do these every time if you want to follow the tutorials, or just remember the differences, for example, that you can find the toolbar settings here too. Hope you like this video, make sure to turn on the notifications to see the newest tutorials. I'm gonna leave the relevant shortcuts down in the comments for you guys and I will do this for every video. Check out my stuff on CG Trader. I have some free models and if you want to support me feel free to buy some models. Links are in the description. At the end of the series you can give suggestions about my tutorials, for example, if some parts of the beginner series weren't clear enough, or you want to know about the Blender tool in more detail, I can do new tutorials on these topics.